Oh boy, do I have a story for you today. Actually, it's an auction, it's not really a story. An auction that started only a few days ago and is expected to go as high as six figures. And no, we're not talking about some weird NFT or some other strange cryptocurrency stuff. We're actually talking about something really strange and somewhat really interesting. It's an auction featuring actual moon dust from the Apollo 11 mission. But not just any moon dust, a moon dust that was extracted from the stomachs of these poor cockroaches, extracted several decades ago and eventually collected right here. In other words, it's an actual dust collected by the Apollo 11 astronauts, eaten by the cockroaches, extracted from them and then placed into one of these capsules and it's now been sold online. And this is one of the strangest stories I've read in a long time. But I also wanted to explain how we got here and what exactly this is. Because it is a pretty interesting story. A story that basically starts around the same time when the Apollo 11 mission finally came back from the moon to planet Earth. And fun fact, usually when I talk about the Apollo mission, one of the Apollo missions, or the moon landing, there's always some smart guy in the comments saying how it's all fake. And so go ahead, write the comment, I'm going to wait for you, and proceed to your next video, because you're probably not going to find anything interesting in this one. Back to the moon landing, which obviously happened. So the thing about the Apollo 11 mission is that it's an extremely important part of the history, and it also allowed us to discover so many things about the moon itself. But during the mission itself, there was still so much uncertainty about so many things. And so, for example, even though so many different robotic probes were sent to the moon prior to this mission, a lot of scientists were still not really sure if, upon the landing, the astronauts would actually start sinking into the lunar regolith. And so here, the scientists had to design a lot of backup systems, such as for example tethers, that would ensure that the astronauts would actually be able to escape the moon really quickly and would not really sink if something started to happen. More importantly though, it was not clear if the moon was really inhospitable and had no life on the surface, or if it potentially had something really dangerous living here. And yes, we are talking about alien life, but not this type of alien life. They were actually really worried about potentially hazardous bacteria or viruses that could maybe wreak havoc here on planet Earth if they were returned here by the astronauts. Back then they referred to them as the moon bugs. And so these moon bugs created a lot of uncertainty for the Apollo mission, Apollo 11. And so because of this, the entire crew and everything they brought with them had to be quarantined for 21 days, pretty much as soon as the craft landed in the water. But because the astronauts brought a lot of samples with them, some of these samples were used for various experiments to determine if there is something potentially dangerous living in them. And so a variety of samples, in this case moon dust, was actually fed to different types of animals. A lot of different vertebrates like fish and mice, and in this case, certain cockroaches. Although, I'm going to avoid showing you too many cockroach pictures and videos because a lot of people out there, including myself, suffer from what's known as cataridophobia, a fear of cockroaches. Or I guess it's not really fear, we just feel grossed out by them. But because of this, I can't really show too many videos because it just makes me feel very, very anxious. And so obviously, I'm totally not interested in the actual auction itself. I never want to see or touch those cockroach samples. But anyway, so approximately 2 kilograms, or about 4.7 pounds, were used up by these experiments testing the safety of these samples. And once these samples were eaten by the fish or by the cockroaches, nobody really thought we'll ever see them back. But this wonderful person, Marion Brooks, an entomologist or someone who studies bugs from University of St. Paul, was hired by NASA to study these cockroaches and to discover if there was anything wrong with them. Specifically, they really wanted to find out if anything weird happened to the cockroaches or if they've experienced anything unusual or anything extraordinary. And by then, the quarantine was actually already finished, so we knew that everything was totally fine and chances are the samples are fine as well. And so, back then, in 1969, she referred to them as pickled cockroaches. And she got to study them and was actually the first to ever receive lunar samples anywhere. And according to the scientists here, the cockroaches were basically fed this with regular food, specifically mixed in half and half proportions, and so the cockroaches didn't even know what they were eating. And so for the cockroaches, nothing unusual was going on here. And in case you're wondering what sort of cockroaches they are, they're known as German cockroaches, also known as Blattelis germanica. Basically, the most common type of a pest usually found in a typical household. But I guess the craziest part of all of this is that the scientists in this case had to extract all of this dust from their stomachs, while also obviously studying if there's anything wrong on the inside. 
And well, according to every study we have so far, there was no evidence of anything infectious going on inside the cockroaches, and nothing toxic or hazardous was found in their bodies. But the scientist behind the study, Dr. Brooks, decided to keep pretty much all of her research and of course the cockroaches and the dust that was extracted from them, while also obviously continuing some of her studies, and placed the lunar samples mixed with some of the other stuff like cockroach food into these small glass vials, preserving pretty much everything for several decades. And that's along with some other strange leftovers and some other strange collections of different samples, but also the three cockroaches that participated in the study. Technically the most expensive cockroaches on the planet. And so apparently all of this was in her house until she passed away a few years ago. And eventually ended up in an auction. And apparently back in 2010 it was already sold for $400,000. Which I guess means that the price here is going to go a little bit higher at some point. Although I do hope that they donate some of this money somewhere good. But because this is such a tiny sample containing approximately 40 milligrams of lunar dust, whoever buys this needs to understand that you're not really buying the lunar regolith in this case, you're really buying the story itself. The incredible legacy that this created, the strange specimen that participated in the study, and of course a lot of other unusual stuff that comes with all of this. And to me personally, this really looks like such a cool project. As a matter of fact, I think more scientists should be doing this, leaving a kind of a memorabilia or potentially a kind of a legacy of a lot of different projects that they've done in the past and specifically the biggest projects of their life. Because of the importance of the Apollo 11 mission and how it transformed our society, and because of how much we've learned from all of these missions over the last few decades, leaving some kind of a memory of a lot of research that helped us understand everything and eventually turn it into, I guess in this case, art, I personally think is super important for the future of science as a whole. Because a lot of these achievements and a lot of these studies are slowly going to disappear into nothingness with time. But because of this, we know about this story. We know about these cockroaches, even though most of us would probably not want to see them. And we also know that all of this happened, and that even during the Apollo 11 mission, we knew so little about the moon. Yet ended up learning so much once the mission was finished. And so this is actually a really interesting way of communicating your scientific discoveries. Although I guess selling it for $400,000, maybe that's a little bit too much. Nevertheless, a pretty cool story and a pretty unusual auction. But I guess for now that's kind of all I really wanted to mention. I just found it to be extremely unusual and extremely interesting and I wanted to share it with you. But I also wanted to tell you a little bit more about how little we knew about the moon even after the astronauts returned from here. So basically up until the last moment, some scientists thought that maybe, just maybe, the moon did have certain bacteria and certain viruses. But now we know that it doesn't. On that note, once I discover something else unusual about the lunar mission, or find something else exciting, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description. And if you do have enough money to potentially participate in the auction, uh, cool. Maybe also consider donating to the charity I'm supporting because it does help children around the world. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Stay wonderful and as always, bye bye. $400,000. $400,000. That is a lot of money for three dead cockroaches.